The movie begins with everyone heading towards the gate, and messages from the ancestors spread by four are still visible on the city buildings. However, when everyone is at the gate ready to leave, Evelyn's subordinates arrive, forbidding them from leaving the wall on Evelyn's orders, leading to the gate being closed. Triss and Four discuss life beyond the wall atop a building. Is there a better life outside, or is it worse? Meanwhile, Evelyn broadcasts live, saying, I know you're curious, but we don't know what's out there. Perhaps the wall was built by our ancestors to protect us. And she also announces that Jeanine is dead. A trial for Jeanine's loyal followers is about to begin. Triss argues with Four that Evelyn is wrong and will soon become like Janine. Four agrees with Triss. Triss then gives Tori a list of office memos to do something, and Tori promptly does it. Triss enters the non-faction headquarters and meets Johanna, who suggests that Triss should lead the city from above. However, Triss refuses, not wanting to make rules. Johanna counters that great leaders don't seek power. They are needed by the people. Jack Kang, despite the absence of the faction system, continues to uphold honesty, and the first trial begins. Where a loyal follower of Jeanine, Max, is injected with a truth serum and questioned by Jack. The serum's potency forces him to reveal all his thoughts honestly, causing frustration among the crowd. Some call for Max's punishment, while others disagree. Amidst the chaos, Evelyn must make a decision, and Max is ultimately punished, to the delight of some and the dismay of others, including Johanna, who leaves as the Amity does not want violence anymore. On the other side, Caleb watches Max's execution with cold sweat, apologizing to Triss, who does not respond. A debate ensues between Four and Evelyn about opening the gate. No matter how much Four pleads, Evelyn refuses to open the gate. Due to the increasingly difficult situation, Four and Triss decide to leave the gate together. But before that, Four visits Caleb in his cell, but observed by Peter and the prison guard. The guard senses something amiss and follows Four to see where he takes Caleb. Outside, Triss waits until Four and Caleb arrive. Suddenly, Evelyn's forces appear, but Four pushes Caleb and fires his gun, pretending to have killed Caleb. After the forces leave, Four instructs Caleb to come out and they escape in a car. During their journey, they are stopped by Peter, who wants to join them. At first, they refused, but as Peter shouted, they took him along. At the checkpoint, Four is interrogated by the guards about the transfer permits for the prisoners. However, Four remains silent, and fortunately Christina arrives just in time with the permits, allowing them to pass through the checkpoint. Meanwhile, the prison guard who reported that Four took Caleb starts chasing them. But luck is on their side as they had already left. Tori is waiting for them near the Great Wall with all the office equipment requested by Triss. They run towards the wall, but as they do, sensors activate, and they try to climb the wall. Christina reaches the top first and tries to cut the wires, but she is thrown back due to the strong electric current caused by the active sensors. Seeing this, Triss blows up a generator to short-circuit the electricity, but Evelyn's forces arrive to chase them. Tragically, as they descend the wall, Tori is killed by a shot from Evelyn's forces. Now only the five of them remain. They walk forward to see what lies ahead, finding water colored red and yellowish land. After walking for a while, they are caught in the rain and take shelter in a collapsed building. Once the rain stops, they continue their journey, but hear the sound of engines and suddenly, a flying car appears above them. It's Evelyn's forces. They try to run from Evelyn's forces, and curiously, a holographic gate opens, revealing many soldiers. They are saved by these soldiers, and Evelyn's forces are shot down. The group is then taken by the soldiers using drones to a genetic health facility. There, Matthew welcomes Triss into a decontamination room to be cleared. In the decontamination room, Triss is asked to undress and her clothes are burned. She is then covered in mud and showered with water. Afterwards, she is given a barcode on her hand to access doors and elevators. Each person has a different barcode. They are then shown a holographic screen containing information about how 21 St. Century scientists discovered a way to modify human genes to create perfect humans without weaknesses. However, the genetic modifications caused humans to lose their humanity, leading to divisions and wars. During these critical times, a group of individuals established a genetic health facility with the goal of purifying human genetics. 
and this experiment took place in Chicago, Triss's home. After watching, they are taken to the headquarters, and along the way, they see many children admiring them. Matthew explains that these children were saved from the fringe. The fringe is the area they pass through before entering the Bureau. Matthew explains that the Bureau's main purpose is research and experimentation with advanced surveillance technology. The people at the Bureau are pleased with their arrival. Triss is then picked up by Matthew to meet the director named David. He claims to know Triss well because he has observed all aspects of her life. To the people of Chicago, Triss is a divergent, and to the council, she is an anomaly. But to David, Triss is a miracle who can shape the future as he desires. David acknowledges the chaos in Chicago and expresses his desire to restore order as it's the only way to heal what's broken. He explains that genetic changes can be dangerous as too much bravery can lead to cruelty, too much peace to passivity, and too much intelligence to a loss of compassion. With Chicago serving as an experiment, it could help purify human genetics. David takes Triss to Providence to meet with them so she can believe his words. He reveals that Triss's mother was not born in Chicago, but in Fringe, and was saved by the Bureau. However, words mean nothing without proof. So David gives Triss a tablet to view her mother's memories. The tablet shows pirates attempting to kidnap children, but the soldiers arrive and save them. Meanwhile, David claims Triss's mother voluntarily left the Bureau to partake in the experiment under the guise of saving the broken. David continuously persuades Triss to save the world until she agrees. As night falls, Four approaches Triss, seemingly distrustful of David. Four notices the difference in the barcodes on their hands, but Triss remains silent. The next morning, Triss wants to meet David and is accompanied by Four. Four tries to open the door with his barcode, but access is denied. Triss tries with her barcode, and access is granted. Four notices these oddities, but remains silent. Inside, Triss asks why no one is allowed upstairs. David replies, it's a council rule. He has obtained Triss's genetic data and needs time to replicate it. Below, Regina accompanies Caleb and Peter to monitor the city of Chicago on the computer. Peter requests a different job as he dislikes desk work, but Regina ignores him. Elsewhere, Four trains with a drone, and Nita teaches him how to operate it, as Four is a legend in Dauntless. Four quickly masters the drone. Caleb, in his workspace, sees Evelyn meeting with Johanna. They converse, and Johanna refers to herself and her followers as allegiance. As they debate, their respective forces arrive, causing chaos. Caleb reports this to Four, but Triss arrives, and Caleb leaves. Four shares with Triss the events unfolding in Chicago. Some of the Dauntless support Johanna, but the Candor faction still fully backs Evelyn. The situation in Chicago is out of control, and Four asks Triss if David can do something about it. Triss believes David can, but only with the Council's decision. Four realizes why he cannot ascend because he is damaged, and Triss is pure. However, Triss defends herself, still believing her mother was saved by the Bureau. Four is skeptical of Triss's story, suspecting it might be fabricated. Then, Matthew arrives to take Triss to meet with David again. Four asks Nita to accompany them to Fringe. Meanwhile, David, aware of the conflict between Triss and Four, tries to reassure Triss about the experiments he's conducting. Four, Nita, Christina, and the team head to Fringe, and on the plane, the team commander states that their mission is humanitarian, to save as many children as possible due to the dire conditions in Fringe. Upon arrival, the locals are terrified of the Bureau aircraft. Four is puzzled by the situation and chases a child and his father trying to escape. Before he can ask questions, the father is shot by one of the Bureau soldiers, who are separating children from their families. They use a gas to erase the children's memories, intending to raise them in the Bureau and strip them of their identities. Four is disturbed by this but contains his reaction. Simultaneously, Triss seeks out Four to tell him she wants to go to Providence. However, David invites Triss onto the plane. While David is there, Peter tells David he wants to change jobs, but David ignores him. The scene shifts back to Chicago, where many have fallen victim to previous incidents, and Joanna rallies the remaining community to oppose Evelyn. Four witnesses this alongside Caleb, and immediately goes to find Triss to convince her to return to Chicago. On his way, he meets Nita and informs her that Four wants to go up. 
Four forces Regina to grant him access to the upper levels. Once there, Four urges Triss to return to Chicago. He explains that Triss has been deceived by the Bureau, which has been kidnapping children from their families. Hearing this, David claims the Bureau is providing the children with a better life. Four rejects this justification and continues to persuade Triss to trust him. Despite his efforts, Triss refuses to leave and chooses to trust David, a man she has just met. Triss tells Four he knows nothing about David. Four pleads with Triss one last time to return home, but Triss leaves him behind. Four speaks out, saying Triss is making a mistake. Ultimately, Triss leaves with David on the plane, leaving Four behind. After Triss departs, the commander offers Four a ride on his plane back to Chicago. Initially, Four refuses, but given the long distance and the impossibility of returning alone, he agrees to board the plane. On the plane, Matthew tells Four that David did not want Four to see Triss's condition. David tightly controls everything, and nothing happens without his approval. Four was puzzled by the amount of information being disclosed to him. Contrary to his expectations, they weren't transporting him to Chicago. Instead, a skirmish broke out, and once again, Four was involved. Matter helped to fend off all the assailants on the aircraft until it was forced to crash land. He and Matthew exited the wreckage, with Four determined to continue his journey to Chicago. Matthew provided him with an access card to bypass the holographic barrier. Matthew reassured Four that Triss would be safe within the Bureau's confines, because David wouldn't risk harming her, considering her immense value to him. Four also cautioned Matthew, revealing that he had intentionally left him behind during the crash to expose Matthew's deceit to Triss, and then Four set off towards Chicago. Upon Triss's arrival in Providence, David presented to the Council, and it was then that Triss discovered David's duplicity and his intentions to restructure the factions. Triss regretted placing her trust in someone she barely knew over her own partner, Four. When Triss reached the Bureau, she was informed by Matthew that their plane had crashed due to a storm. Concerned for Four's whereabouts, Triss questioned Matthew, who claimed ignorance due to his unconscious state during the incident. When he awoke, he found everyone deceased except for Four, who had abandoned him. Then David left and Triss approached Matthew and said that Four would not leave anyone at the accident scene. Finally, Matthew explained everything to Triss. Later, Peter sought a new assignment from David, who in turn offered Peter a task that would grant him the freedom to choose his future role. Elated, Peter accepted the proposition. Meanwhile, Triss instructed Caleb to search for Four. Evelyn's forces had captured Peter, who leaked strategic information to them, which they immediately used on Marcus. Caleb eventually located Four and relayed the news to Triss, also revealing that Peter had informed Evelyn about the memory-erasing gas. Triss was baffled by David's collaboration with Evelyn in the conflict, realizing that the gas was intended for memory eradication and faction reformation. Evelyn confronts Four, who is under arrest. Four urges Evelyn to make peace with the Legion, but she refuses, unfazed by his warnings. Meanwhile, Evelyn's subordinates inform her that Evelyn has prepared gas for the upcoming war, which will make Chicago forget everything. Four then becomes enraged and fights all the guards but fails. Triss orders Caleb to call Christina and regroup outside to return to Chicago. Frustrated, Triss enters David's office and takes over an airplane, intending to pilot it back using the autopilot function. However, David's forces pursued her, forcing the autopilot to make a safe landing. Showing her resilience, Triss switched to manual control, skillfully navigating the plane despite her inexperience. In the end, only David's plane was able to cross the holographic barrier. Triss, Caleb, and Christina were looking for a way to deploy the gas, and they could see that the ventilation system was everywhere. After landing, Christina and Triss searched for Four to stop Evelyn while Caleb waited on the plane, monitoring the situation. As they navigated the corridors, they used a drone to carry out their plan. Evelyn's forces were confused by the drone, perhaps seeing such a self-flying object for the first time. Four spotted the drone and immediately attacked the guards there. Triss eventually apologized to Four, and because Four is kind-hearted, he forgave her easily. Peter convinced Evelyn that now was the right time to release her gas. Eventually, Evelyn activated her gas, and Caleb immediately reported this to Triss. At the same time, Triss, Four, and Christina rushed to Evelyn's location. 
Upon arrival, they found the door wouldn't open. Christina looked for a way to enter through the control room. Meanwhile, Four tried to persuade Evelyn to stop the gas, but Evelyn remained stubborn in her actions. Triss said that the gas was not meant to erase the memories of the Allegiant, but everyone in the city. Four also said that he would not recognize Evelyn ever again. Hearing this, Evelyn was moved and turned off her gas, but Peter, being cunning, shot Evelyn and reactivated the gas. Triss tried to communicate with Caleb, but David cut off the communication channel. Eventually, Caleb came to Triss. Peter, who was relaxed inside, was shocked because the gas entered his room. Triss and Four forced him to open the door, and Peter reluctantly did so, then fled. Triss and Four tried to turn off the machine but couldn't. Caleb arrived and informed them how to stop the gas flow. They had to destroy the isolation valve that controlled the air. After learning this, Triss hurried to destroy the valve, and they succeeded in stopping the gas from spreading. In short, Evelyn and Johanna made peace, and Triss broadcasted to the city what really happened. She said that there are others out there who consider themselves pure while viewing us as damaged, turning us into experiments that nearly destroyed us all. We must stand together as one city, not five factions. Then Caleb set up David's plane to return with a bomb. Everyone was confused because it was their first time seeing a plane. When the plane reached the gate, the bomb exploded, destroying the hologram wall, and the film ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.